Thomas of different localizations. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues, uh, members of the podium. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the organizing committee because it's great we can share uh, our philosophical views about search of Norbert Storm and such in a top notch forum. Uh, the title is uh, multi, uh, multifaceted, so uh, it's uh, over embracing, so we won't be able to tell you about everything. We'll just share our ideas. Maybe in Q&A session, we'll discuss it more in details. When we select surgical strategy, strategy each patient with neuroplastoma, every time it's a puzzle, we'll have to figure out many factors as well, because as currently in neuroblastoma treatment, the mankind knows a lot, but cannot ignore all that coming up with the indications for this or that intervention. So it will depend whether it's localized form or not. Uh, maybe we can confine to minimal invasive technologies or it's uh, uh, well propagated. Are there idea of factors? What's their contribution? And bottom line, which group this patient was referred to? So maybe uh, it will be surgically uh, utterly pointless to do this surgery. So all those issues are very important and topical and outages, K immune therapy, and many other components are missing here in this slide, actually. So let's continue. This is very conventional slide. Five years survival in high risk group patients remains uh, to be much more wanted. So it's not very high. So we surgeons should try and optimize uh, this. The role of surgery presently yet uh, is not lost when it's localized form. So in most likelihood, if it's a small mass, easily accessible, so minimal invasion could be good. Biopsy and uh, removal. Uh, simultaneously done, we should structure the treatment based on the results. If it's uh, uh, just uh, locally uh, prevalent uh, tumor, if there are no metastases or inclusive of for S stage, we'll see, we'll have to make a decision whether this tumor is resectable or not, or maybe it's not resectable. Uh, but I think they're all resectable, but whether the patient is operable, I'll explain why. Minimal invasive access, as you know, presently in surgery is the major trend in children and in adults. And according to most of the publications as to indications for laparoscopy and toroscopic surgeries, actually they are confined to those factors. That is why we put them in inverted coma, because first of all, it's the absence of risk factors of IDRF and depending on the publications, uh, uh, it's within this uh, range between four to seven centimeters, the size of tumor which could be removed by laparoscopy. Sometimes we doubt and challenge this. As to IDRF uh, factors in literature, there is a plethora of publications about it, but this is rather fresh one dated 2015 by our Norwegian colleagues. I can uh, refer to it's comprehensive study which included a big number of patients they were split into two, three groups group one covered patients with localized disease so they didn't have risk factors second group uh, covered patients with L2 with risk factors with first surgery and third group uh, with uh, uh, the worst results long term and immediate uh, that covered patients with risk factor IDRF L2 and of course patients who had surgery by post induction therapy and so those figures and numbers demonstrated by the authors are indicative of the fact that it's not only IDRF risk factors especially in high risk group make a contribution into prognosis of these patients so we as surgeons have got a field for maneuvering uh, it could be called the leeway as to thoracic surgeries line share of thoracic surgeries is reduced uh, uh, to a removal of small uh, new uh, masses uh, in uh, uh, lateral mediastinum and he, this is rather uh, the patient with uh, CT shows it's, uh, it's high aperture of the thorax uh, these patients are 
hundreds of RDFs, uh, very small space for operations, very challenging, but we removed the tumor. Uh, I cannot show all this, but it is possible, and there are some other examples. And I'm just telling you about uh, our victories, and, and I'll tell you about our failures as well, whereby we removed the tumor uh, from uh, thoracoscopically leftwards, rightwards, combined axis, so we could remove that with full skeletization of thoracic aorta and its uh, uh, key components as to laparoscopic axis. Of course, uh, here in these zones, it's more challenging to do the surgery. There are its own peculiarities as to adrenal glands. Uh, golden standard is laparoscopy and paravertebral small neoplasms, which are in line, uh, which are complied with the criterial inclusion we discussed. That child uh, was much smaller than the previous one. You can see that here, unfortunately, uh, this is a static uh, image. Uh, uh, there is the involvement of the uh, right hepatic uh, leg artery, hepatic vein, lower vena cana, uh, and uh, semi-circumference, right semi-circumference of the thoracic aorta. All those RDR factors uh, did make it possible for laparoscopy on this mass. But uh, as to this surgery, it ended up with conversion because there was the injury of uh, uh, superficial uh, right iliac vein. We could do laparoscopy, but we decided not to be. We did uh, laparotomy. laparotomy. One way or the other, we proved for ourselves uh, that such surgeries are possible, uh, potentially. So most interesting, high-risk group patients and patients having uh, uh, the uh, localization, uh, the process which is going into uh, thorax or uh, in peritoneum. And in October, we had a meeting whereby we discussed the expediency of those surgeries, very contradictory data when we analyzed the entire available literature which was available back then, and all the retrospective publications. And when we were preparing uh, this presentation, we didn't uh, find any fundamental new uh, publications. We'll demonstrate some of them. Actually, the one uh, to which Dennis Urich referred to, Torsten Simon 20 and Al, uh, 2013, 278 patients uh, studied with different volumes of tumor removal, unfortunately, statistically, relevant uh, as to statistically relevant uh, uh, survival. It did not increase uh, drastically. Other works like Mark Lenkweiler from uh, Kent Center, uh, he's very famous uh, surgical aggressor of not just neuroblastoma but other tumors. Interesting results: 220 patients in high risk group were analyzed. You can see that statistically significant increase of event-free survival, progress-free survival were obtained in patients uh, with the removal of more than 90 percent of tumor vis-a-vis -vis other group of patients who had lesser volume of uh, uh, surgery less than 90%, uh, but P is 0 uh, 0.3. That, uh, as regards uh, uh, total survival, there were no advantages. This is meta-analysis, 200 patients, L2 stage, and uh, 13 uh, 370 at stage 4. Authors come to a conclusion uh, that if it's uh, uh, stage 3 or L2 on NGSS, we should be very careful in patients with high risk group because because they are supposed uh, uh, to be treated to other therapy, not just uh, surgery, which could uh, end up all for them, you know. Very interesting publication by Chinese uh, year 2018, meta-analysis of 19 retrospective studies, which uh, totally unite almost 2,500 patients. And here you can see statistical uh, significance that five years and three years uh, total survival of patients on, uh, with gross total Authorization is better vis-a-vis -vis those who had cyto uh, reduction, uh, which um, actually, uh, what can we see? And of course, we as surgeons, we can see that clinical oncologists are a great 
stage doing all those things because uh, uh, if it's a high-risk group, it's not just uh, surgery and uh, we are searching for a compromise. It's a long and winding road with failures and success, but in microsurgery, using transplantation technologies, which is a quite popular term uh, among us, we can see some advantages uh, at the use of operational uh, microscope. Uh, we uh, can remove uh, the central location we know those CTs when the tumor uh, includes all the trunk vessels and visceral branches when it's possible to remove but one with the other and by the way you see here and there is no time to tell you about all those uh, uh, tips and tricks actually like we say in literature uh, but that way we can remove any localizations tumor uh, and we see only advantages in these just to be outspoken but we do not use it every step of the way, not in every surgeries. And you will see how it looks like uh, post-op uh, after removal of the tumor, tumor, all those skeletized vessels, everything is cleared um, by the surgery, unfortunately could not be referred to as fully safe. And the diarrhea, which uh, I just uh, follows the patients with the sympathization of the upper mesenteric artery uh, is so persistent that it worsens life quality of patients and they are next of kin. Diarrhea is only the tip of I see uh, of uh, uh, just the, the tip of, of this uh, here. But if there are visceral branches and other vessels, lesions, consequences could be more serious, starting with those which impact uh, drastic life quality and all the way uh, up the, to those which jeopardize survival of patients. Uh, let's say a local uh, uh, neuroblastoma, this is CT and you can see hepatic artery on hepatic artery after the condomic deletion uh, split into uh, branches and left hepatic uh, um, arteries three millimeter arteries towards segment three segment four of liver left hepatic artery right there was lesioned uh, and we had three options either to do not nothing and there was demarcation in the left lobe of the uh, liver uh, or just to wait and then to observe where the ischemic changes will come up and typically they uh, do. It means tantalizing length, uh, drenching or a left hand side hepatotomy, but that's too much for neuroblastoma. Try to do the reconstruction. We opted for the third uh, alter alternative. Uh, three branches, three millimeter branches, we had to revascularize uh, revascularize that because we could do the plastic uh, surgery here. Uh, segment of four, we understood, did the anastomosis with gastroduodenal artery and astomosis with the left gastric artery. Uh, we were fortunate there were no ischemic changes with this patient. He is back home now. Uh, neuroglanglan, uh, neuroblastoma, four-year-old boy with interim risk uh, group. Uh, we can just Justify our actions uh, due to that. Uh, we removed more than 95% of the tumor. He's back home. Here, the aftermath could be way more tragic, but uh, fortunate it didn't happen. A one year old boy uh, local, uh, propagated the uh, neuroblastoma of left adrenal gland. More than 95% was removed. High risk group. You can see that. We, there was a resection of common hepatic artery, and this is the and actually anastomosis. If it happened, there we would lose uh, not just the left lobe um, blood circulation, but uh, the entire region. My conclusions: I'll go backwards with them. Neuroblastoma, interim risk uh, patients, L2 stage, of course. Uh, uh, there are lots of publications by our overseas colleagues and our colleagues which are dedicated to that type uh, of uh, grade. And actually, all those 
methodologies and microsurgical technologies, vascular surgery, resection, uh, resection of adjacent organs is the model whereby it's necessary to use. As regards patients in high risk group, summarizing on, on the publications we're referred to today, we can say, although it's rather tentative, but we can trace the trend that survival has been improving. That was brought up by today's lectures as to minimal invasive surgery. We can notionally say that those indications which are articulated and exist around the world currently, we can adhere to them. And I think that currently it would be a blasphemy now when we see that laparotomy or torcotomy of the uh, posterior uh, mediastinum uh, uh, tumor. But as to the patients with RDRF, uh, future is for that uh, surgery. But it depends on the clinic and depends on the capacity of this medical site, of course. And without any doubt, each one of those circumstances uh, are formulated by a multidisciplinary team. And this slide is by no means accidental. Last one. And here we show the improvement of surgical treatment. Here are the options the patients are entitled to, especially when it's high-risk group patients.